Hey everyone, don't mind pickles. Today I have a 20 minute Tabata superset workout for you. It is total body and it's broken up into four Tabatas. In each Tabata, I'll give you two exercises and you'll alternate between them using an interval structure of 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest. In total, there are eight intervals. After you complete a Tabata superset, you get a full 60 seconds to rest while I show you the next two exercises and then we'll move on. Now there is no jumping at all in this workout. So it's a great option if you just wanna eliminate jumping, maybe you have knee issues, or if you live in an apartment building, you're on an upper floor and you don't wanna annoy your downstairs neighbors with all that thudding around. For equipment, you're gonna need a medium weight. I'm using two options. I have a 10 pound dumbbell and an eight pound dumbbell, um, just cause I like to be able to drop down for shoulder exercises. Um, but you could get away with just one medium weight. And then you're also going to need a heavy kettlebell. Um, you could do it with a dumbbell, a heavy dumbbell instead, but we will be doing swings. So I always prefer to use a kettlebell for those. I have a 20 pound kettlebell today. As with all workouts, you wanna make sure you're properly warmed up beforehand and always listen to your body modifying or stopping as needed. Before each Tabata superset, I'll give you a preview of the exercises and I will also show you how to modify. But keep in mind that for a lot of these exercises, your modification is just going to be to use a lighter weight or even just body weight. First Tabata superset is lower body focused. You're gonna grab your medium weight and you're gonna hold it at your chest. We'll do a back lunge with a knee drive. Do the same leg as me to start. So I want you to have your left foot forward and we'll step back on our right foot. And then you're gonna drive that back right knee in and out before standing up again. Now, when you step back into the lunge, it's very important you lean forward a lot. So look, from the top of my head to that back right heel is one long diagonal line. That lean forward is gonna help you do the knee drive and allow you to keep all the weight in that front stationary left heel. 10 seconds to rest. You're gonna grab your heavy weight now. I'm grabbing my kettlebell. We're gonna go into goblet squats. You're gonna add a pulse at the bottom. So feet are about shoulder widths apart. Weight is in your heels as you slide your hips down and back. You're gonna give me a pulse down low in that squat, and then you're gonna drive your hips forward, squeezing your bum at the top. Now, when you squeeze your butt at the top, make sure you're also engaging through your core so you don't hyperextend through the low back. Rest. Okay, we're gonna go back to that back lunge, but we're gonna switch the leg, that's the focus. So that medium weight comes to your chest, your right foot's going to stay planted. We will step our left foot back, big lean forward with the torso, drive that knee in and out, and then stand up. So just like we were talking about in that squat, when you stand up, squeeze that right butt cheek at the top. Okay, finish the movement. And when you step back, you got that big hip hinge, big lean forward with the torso, but stay open through your chest. 10 seconds to rest, switch out the weights. Heavy weight, you're gonna rack it at your chest, elbows in tight, roll your shoulder blades down your spine, you're brought across the collarbones. Weight is in your heels as the hips slide down and back. Give me a pulse at the bottom and squeeze your bum at the top. So if you look at my knees right now, they're tracking in line with the pinky toes. Make sure your knees are not collapsing inward of your big toes. Ten seconds to rest. We're at the halfway point. So you're going to grab that medium weight. We will isolate the left side again. So left foot's going to stay stationary. Big step back on that right side. 
Let's talk about the upper body for a second. So I've been telling you we want this big hinge forward, shoulders over that front knee. Let's make sure that we're keeping a neutral spine so your abs are in tight and we're brought across the collarbone. So engage through your lats a little bit. And what I mean by that is just shift your shoulder blades together and down your spine slightly. Rest. Shift your shoulder blades. Say that 10 times fast. <laughs> Grab your heavy weight. We got that goblet squat with a pulse at the bottom. Weight in the heels, hips shift back. Your chest is staying lifted though. So reach your tailbone long. It's that same broadness across your collarbones. <laughs> 10 seconds to rest. Let's grab that medium weight. So we're not jumping around, um, but this should be challenging. And if it's not, you're not using a heavy enough weight. Big step back, drive that knee in and out, stand. Now, if you have low back issues and having the weight at your chest is causing you low back pain, ditch the weight, okay? Ten seconds to rest. Grab that heavy weight. This is your final 20 second interval of work in this Tabata superset. Goblet squat, pulse at the bottom, let's go. Hips slide down and back, up a couple inches, down a couple inches, drive those hips forward as you stand. Sixty seconds to rest. I'll show you the next two exercises. Lower body is still a focus in this Tabata, but we are going to shift to upper body as well, specifically shoulders. So I want you to grab your heavy weight, do the same side as me. We're going to be in a lunge with your left foot forward, and the weight is going to be in your right hand. We're going to do a shoulder press with that right side in a low lunge, and then a dynamic one where you straighten the legs as you do the shoulder press. So it's a shoulder press low lunge, a shoulder press as you extend up, driving through that front left heel. Your core has to be working hard here, all right? I want you to brace through the midsection, knit the ribs together, low abs scoop up and in. Rest. We're gonna come to a truck driver, so I would drop to a lighter weight. You're gonna find a low squat position and you are holding a low squat the entire 20 seconds while you extend that weight out and you twist it. So kind of like you are have your hands on a steering wheel, except I hope no one actually drives like that. <laughs> now, you need to be um, engaged through your back muscles on this one, so I want you to slide your shoulder blades together and down your spine so that you're nice and broad across your collarbones, and then you do the twist from there. Shake it out. So we're going to go back to that shoulder press. We're switching sides, though. I cannot say S words today. Left hand has the weight. Right foot is forward in that lunge. Let's go. Shoulder press and then drive up another shoulder press. It is normal to notice differences between your sides. This arm, it is way harder for me um, because I am a righty and definitely dominant on that side. Slow it down as needed. Make sure your core is working here, okay? We don't want to sink into the low back. Rest. Drop down to that lighter weight. We're going to go into that truck driver hold. Low squat, weight in the heels, hips slide down and back. Stay lifted through your chest, though. Reach your tailbone long. And then we start to twist without hunching through our upper body. That is so important. Retract those shoulder blades down your spine. If this gets to be too much for your shoulders, bring your hands into your chest for a couple breaths and then extend them back out. Rest. Grab that heavy weight. It's going back in your right hand. Left foot will be forward in that lunge position. Brace through your core. Shoulder press low. Shoulder press as you press off those legs. 
Make sure you're not holding your breath during this. Um, if you notice yourself doing that, I want you to exhale as you do the shoulder press. So think exhale, blow out, knit your ribs together. 10 seconds to rest, ditch the heavy weight, drop to the lighter one. Truck driver hold. In your squat hold, make sure the knees are tracking in line with your middle to pinky toes. They're not caving inward. Grab your heavy weight. Last time through these two exercises. You got it. Left hand is going to have the heavy weight. Right foot is going to be forward. Find your lunge stance. We stay in that stationary lunge position, just straightening and bending through the legs, uh, but there's no movement of the feet. Try to stay active the whole 20 seconds. If you need to slow it down to keep proper form, though, do so. You are done with that exercise. Let's go to the lighter weight. If you're struggling with these truck drivers, go even lighter, okay? Low squat hold, extend that weight out, and you wanna keep the weight right around chest height as you do this. Make sure your shoulders aren't scrunching up towards your ears. So again, you slide the shoulder blades together and down your spine, we're really broad across the chest. Knit your ribs together, but reach your tailbone long, weight in the heels. Let's go, final couple seconds. 60 seconds of recovery. Next two moves coming up. Core and specifically obliques are going to be the focus of this one. Um, and I want you to mirror me. It's going to be easiest. So you're going to focus on your left side body first. So your left form will be down on the floor. Left foot will be on the floor. And you're going to take that medium weight and put it on your top right hip. Start making your way to that side plank position. And once you're in it, we're going to hover that top leg and start to dip our hips down a couple inches and up a couple inches. So yes, left side obliques are the focus, but you're getting into the left side glutes and the abductors here too. So it really is a total body exercise, that left shoulder working as well. Down a couple inches, up with the hips. If you need to modify, rest the top foot on your bottom foot. Rest. Now anchor the heavy weight between your feet, and you're going to take the lighter weight at your chest. We're going to do a uh, twisting sit-up. So as you lower, it's kind of like you're doing a Russian twist, side to side, getting a little lower, a little lower, and then you twist to the top. Keep this going, squeezing that weight to anchor your feet in place. I want you to anchor your feet in place so that you can get really low through the torso. Rest, we're going to find our side plank. This time your right form is going to be on the floor. Weight goes to your top left hip. Hover that top leg, and let's start to move those hips down a couple inches, up a couple inches. Now let's tune our attention to that right shoulder for a second. Push the floor away, stay long through the neck, engaging through your lats to slightly shift the shoulder blade down your spine so that we're staying open through the chest. Rest. Anchor that heavy weight between your feet. You're going to grab that weight. The lighter weight, hold it at your chest, and let's do those twisting sit-ups. If your elbows are in the way on these, then I want you to hold the weight at your chest and cross your hands, one opposite hand at each shoulder, and that's going to help. Rest. Just like that, we're at the halfway point. So we're going to find our side plank, left forearm down. Again, push the floor away, stay broad across your chest, hover that top leg, 
and we're going to dip the hips up a couple inches, down a couple inches. When you go up a couple inches, picture you're almost making a rainbow shape with your body. Squeeze, lift, lift, arc up to the ceiling, lower a couple inches. Rest. Heavy weights anchored between the feet. Lighter weight comes out your chest. And we will twist. So I'm demoing now how to get your elbows out of the way if you can't get very low because of them. Hands in front of your chest and just press the weight into you rest. Last time through these exercises, right side plank. So right forearm will be down. Weight comes to your top left hip. If the weight is too much, you can always just do this body weight. Hips down a couple inches, up a couple inches. Now try to keep your top hip directly over the bottom hip. Sometimes what happens in a side plank is we want to roll open through the hips. So can you take that top left hip and pull it closer to your screen? Ten seconds to rest. Last time with those twisting sit-ups. Let's go. Weight goes between your feet. Lighter weight at your chest. And twist it out as you lower. Go slow. So you should twist to each side at least twice on the way down. And done, you have 60 seconds to rest while I show you our last two exercises. set of exercises coming up. We are going to start with a curtsy lunge with a pulse at the bottom. Then we'll step low to a low squat and then we will drive up. I want you to mirror me. So rack your heavy weight on your left shoulder. Your left foot is going to stay planted. You're going to step your right foot back behind you. Pulse when you're in that low curtsy lunge, then step to a low squat and then you drive up to stand. You have 10 seconds to rest. We're gonna come into kettlebell swings next. So start with the bell on the floor in front of you. Find a low squat position with your chest lifted. Grab that weight and start by swinging it back and then you thrust the hips forward. Now, if you don't have kettlebell swings down, um, I, again, I showed you at the start, you can do a different exercise. Maybe you're doing a single leg deadlift or you're just doing that hinge. Now this movement, it's not a squat, it's a hip hinge. So your hips slide back and then you squeeze your seat as you drive the hips forward and that creates the momentum. All right, 10 seconds to rest. We are gonna go into that single-sided curtsy lunge, other side, so rack the heavy weight on your right shoulder. You're gonna mirror me, right foot stays still as you step your left foot back, pulse at the bottom, low, squeeze your bum at the top. I hope you guys are all working harder than Pickles is right now, just dead asleep on the couch behind me. <laughs> Rest. Place that weight on the floor. We're gonna go into our swings. Think long spine, swing the kettlebell back, hips thrust forward. So there is a type of swing where you bring the weight all the way over your head. That's common in CrossFit. If you're comfortable doing that and you want to go for it, but otherwise I just want the weight coming up to about chest height. You're not pulling with your arms. Your arms are just part of the pendulum. The power comes from your hips. Rest. Okay. And you're at the halfway point. We're going to go back to that curtsy. Let's rack the weight on our left shoulder. Step back, pulse at the bottom, low squat, drive the hip, squeeze your bum at the top. If these are easy, you should be using a heavier weight. Rest. 
rest. All right, swing's coming up. Again, you safely start a swing with it on the floor in front of you. You get low and you start by swinging it back and then up chest height. So notice, if you look at me, yes, there's a little bending of my knees, but the movement is created by my hips sliding back, forward, back, forward. From the top of my head to my tailbone is one long line. And rest. So we got that curtsy other side, weight is racked on your right shoulder. Last time you'll see this exercise. Rest. Okay, final set of swings, and this is your last 20 second interval of work. You'll be done with this workout after that. So let's go, find that low position, swing that kettlebell back and up. So you should feel kettlebell swings, um, primarily in your hamstrings and glutes, although it is absolutely a core exercise as well. If you are not feeling it there, you might be doing it incorrectly. And in that case, again, do that single leg deadlift I demoed at the start. And done. Awesome work. Hope you enjoyed that workout. If you did, you know the drill. Give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I post new workouts here every Monday. I will see you next week.